Hi, welcome to Texas Lone Wolf channel, source for Red Peel Truth, okay? Now, today's topic is, um, you know, of course, we had the uh, Great Depression of the 20th, 20th century. Remember the 1930s when, the, um, you know, we had this little, this, this chart right here. Yeah, take a look. Um, 1920, everything was going great. And, uh, see, uh, it didn't start till about 1921 uh, when the stocks went down. You see what I'm saying? About 21 or 20, 19, uh, 21 or 1922 in the 20th century. So, see, that was the pre Addiction to the precursor of 1929 Black Friday when the stock market collapsed. The money went worthless. Uh, millions of people were thrown out of work. People were trying to go to get their money out of a bank. They had restrictions on their account. They couldn't get no money out of the bank. They had some, many people went to have to do a bank run. And notice, the assets of commercial banks declined almost to 30% in the 1934 or some around there. That's when we, um, the American people, elected Franklin Delano, Ro Delano Roosevelt to president. He could have went three terms, but unfortunately he passed away, so Congress limited the president to two terms in office. So that means eight years. Do you see where I'm going at with this? So this topic is going to be talking about the global collapse of banks, okay? Now, what can that mean then for the people way back then? You know, they did not have that mentality that we do not have today. People today do not know how the elders or the silent generation lived way back then prior to World War One and World War Two. They did not, you know, I guess have that. They had to make do. See what I'm saying? Anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and go over, I'm going to go over some, I'm going to go ahead and take this picture off, I'm going to go over some topics, you know, um, anyways, I'm going to show you the, um, article on the National Bureau of Economic Research, all right? This was the uh, panicked bank loan to money multiplier from 1929 to 1932, all right? So, so when you have a run at a bank, huh. not everybody's going to get their money out of there. Okay, okay, let me explain this to you. When you put money into the uh, bank account, they clatter a few keys, put the numbers in your account, okay, in your uh, digital ledger. Everybody's got a digital ledger at a financial institution. So they can't hold your cash because that cash becomes a liability. So they have to loan that cash out to make money on that cash. It keeps that flow of cash floating around. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to talk about this. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up here. Let me take this picture down. And uh, I'm going to... 
I'm going to go ahead and pull this up here. Okay, you ready? Let me um, let me bring this. Let me go ahead and bring this back up. Okay, you ready? Um, let me uh, let me bring it up. Here we are now. I need you to focus on this, all right? Let's take a good look at this. See, f fear of failure, bank panics, and Great Depression. So how did the silent generation, a generation before the boomers and the Gen X and the uh, millennials, that generation lived, okay, with the, uh, you know, now, analysis of the new data from the early 30s suggests that depositor fears led to runs on banks that were clustered in time and space. These panics significantly reduced lending and monetary aggregate. Okay, each, so, um, so anyways, I'm going to put this here. Um, anyways. I just want you to know a lot of people lost their farms. They lost their their money. They went out had they had to go work. All right. They had to go they worked for a nickel a day. You know, that's before we uh had this government labor boards and tell how much Minimum wage per hour and all that good stuff. You know, um, now, the Federal Reserve did not come into existence until 1913 when the Federal Reserve Act was formed by former President Woodrow Wilson. He signed that act into law with the uh, senators and the other um, powerful people that controlled the global finance. So, in other words, the Federal Reserve is not a legal institution. It is a separate institution from the United States government, but prints the money for everybody to use to live in the United States that is not controlled by the government. It's controlled through the uh, other areas. Follow me on this? Now, everything is all tied See, we had that 1929, that, you know, that depression, uh, you know, it started in August 29. And everybody lost their backside. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, so could we, the people in the 21st century, see this happen in our lifetime? Could we? The answer is possible. Listen, listen, listen. We did not have credit unions way back in the 1920s. We had banks. Okay? We did not have FDIC back then. That was created when FDR did a new deal. Then we got some different agencies created and what have you. Everything else was created in addition to prevent uh, banking problems. Then we had Frank and Dodd Act signed in the 1930s to prevent banks from merging to becoming too big to fail, like Wells Fargo, all these other big-name banks that we know. Now, Silicon Valley Bank, was a, a bad deal for many uh, celebrities who put their money in there trusting it's going to be there. Of course, a lot of people just sold their stock and left that bank down near dry and the FDIC went in there, renamed it, kept it operating, and plus insured the funds that were in there for the depositors. You see what I'm saying? 
So could what happened in 1929, okay, happen again? I, 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 listen, I'm no fortune teller. I'm no soothsayer. All right. Now, look at this. The bank room that helped create the Great Depression. An average Joe, an alpha Adam, and beta Brad were out working during that time. You know what? They put their money in the bank like, you know, it's safe. We trust it. We save it. It's, it's, it's safe to leave it in there. Okay? And uh, American Union Bank here in this photo Depositors, they went to the front of that closed bank in 1932 to get their money. The money was not there. A lot of people lost their money. And anyways, So I'm just going to tell you that this is not, <clears throat> excuse me, this is not going to end really well. I'm just looking at some of these here. But the bank run of 1930s, is this going, it's going to, can it happen again? I chose to do banking with a credit union. Now, And, of course, we're seeing this, theguardian.com. What happened when central banks, of course, you know, somebody behind the scene manipulating the rates, and reverses quantitative easing. I don't know if you know what that is. I'm going to go look for it for you, okay? Be right back. I'm going to go look for it for you, okay? So, now... Uh, talk about uh, slash rate, stop bond sales, X policy tells BOE, all right, that's Bank of England, race in the global crisis rattles central banks around the world. Everything's all connected. Okay? It's been a year since the Federal Reserve starts raising interest rates, and banks are starting to fall over in the U.S. I'm telling you, is I mean, I, I tell you what. Ever since the bank's been, uh, you know, you know, being solvent and been keeping their cash, their their spreadsheet, their cash sheets open and running. All right. Anyways, yeah, they kept their uh, cash sheets operating at optimal, you know, rates, so to speak. Did you know what? Okay. They've been operating a world of low interest, ultra low interest rates and periodic injections of electronic cash from central banks. Originally seen by temporary expedient in high stress condition after the collapse of Lehman Brothers. That happened in 2008, and Bear Stearns, those were investment banks. They invested in the stock market. That was originally what Frank and Dodd law was stuck to prevent. That was there to prevent that. But remember, George Bush Jr. reversed that law. Then the banks went on a merge mania and did all these loosening. They loosened the regulations, and banks went crazy on this. 
and what is loose regula regulations happens with with this you know banks failing you know we had credits uh, we had um Swiss bank in Switzerland in Europe they're, they're getting rattled they're, they're, they had to stop halt trading. Now, Bank of England is quicker out of the block than Fed. The thread needle street began raising rate in December 2021 has now raised them 10 times in a row. The European Central Bank waited until July last year before making a decision to increase borrowing costs for the first time in a decade. And despite news that bank in Mali's spread across the Atlantic to credit Suisse in Switzerland. That's one of the, okay, Credit Suisse in Switzerland is one of the banks that has a nice little chunk of investments by many other banks in other countries. That's a safe place where you cannot lose money. And they went, they lost money. Okay. Ignore the fact U.S., U.K., Eurozone economy have been held up better than was expected. Aftermath of energy price shock caused by, you know, of course, this proxy war. I'm going to call it a proxy war, okay? Now, as BCA research pointed out, there is three classic signs that recession is coming in the U.S. Downturn in the housing market, bank failures, rising un unemployment, Oh, home building is down by 20%. Guess what? All the houses that are built, guess what they're going to have to do to the prices? They're going to have to drop the prices. The bank got no money to lend for the uh, first-time home buyer. Okay? Then the state and the counties are capped. Only so high that they're allowed to tax. Guess what? They're going to have to drop the taxes. Because guess what? Everybody raised up their rate. They raised up the price. They raised up the tax. They raised this up, raised that up. Borrowing for a first-time home buyer is going to drop. Okay? The employment's going to take a hit. Employers who've got money to hire new workers, they're going to say, well, we're going to have to lay this off. We're going to have to lay that off. Take a look at the layoffs. Connect that with the uh, bank failures. Connect that with the... Uh, Downturn of the housing market. Connect that. Connect everything together in your mind. Look at this. Banks, look at here. Banks tend to fail before the recession begins. The central bank raises the interest rate. Makes it costly to make loans. Okay. And here we go. Here's another prediction right here that the uh, Joshi is saying. Look at this. The first, hang on, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me highlight. First three bank failures happen, happen in February, September, and October. Take note of the months. We're already past February. That's when the bank failed in February. We're in March. Could September of 2023 and October of 2023 be coming up? Who knows? I don't have the answers. But what I'm telling you is, okay, the... Depression and recession of 1929 and the 1930s. It's going to be like a walk in the park compared to what we're going to face in the 21st century. Because of the electronics, the computers, um, everybody's intertwined with each other. Listen, 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 listen. Okay, if... Listen, take a look at this. 
For example, let's take a look at this for example. All right. In the 1920s, all right. Well, actually, wait a minute. Let me let me back this up. The United States got hit first with the Great Recession. Then it spread to Europe. They had a Great Depression. Then it spread to other countries. That's where all these rogue leaders got elected when they had a recession or depression. That's when they got elected. Are you following me? So take a look at right now. Today is 2023. And we have an election in 2024. Isn't it a coincidence that we might have a bank failure before the presidential election in 2024? Could that be a possibility? Listen, listen to me. I'm not trying to instill fear in people. But I'm trying to help you connect the dots in your mind. I'm trying to help you connect the dots in history to be better prepared for what is to come, so to speak. So, um, the Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank just it just happened, and the start of a bank failure is presence of economic recession more imminent than more people anticipate. It can be it can be a prediction indicator, is what I'm trying to say. Listen, 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 listen. Do you remember that story of Moses who built a boat on dry land? He said, There's a great flood coming. Many people laughed at him and mocked him and made fun. You prepare for disaster to come. You got to face it head on. Ah, oh, well, you're going to pull your cash out. Listen, listen. You pull your cash out, it's going to be worthless. I tell you what. Let's say you have $20 in the account. You know, 20 U.S. dollars. You pull that out, your account's closed, okay? They're going to mark it out as closed. Well... You go out and buy something, and something's going to cost you $10. Well, they're going to give you change, $9 something change back after they collect taxes and whatever. And you're already broke. When you go look for a job, nobody's hiring because everybody's on a hiring freeze. What I'm trying to say is don't make rash decisions that you're going to regret later, so to speak. And I'm not encouraging bank runs. Anyways, you know, when we are in a banking crisis, UBS, this is a bank in Switzerland. And everybody's, everybody's over here in a panic. Speed of a demise of a U.S. bank, SVB, then credit Suisse in Europe has spooked many investors. Investors was keeping the banks going, all right? Well, you get bank A and bank Z, they put their money in this one bank B, and then they, they keep each other going. You follow me? And... You remember Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns? They failed and they got sold. And uh, some banks did so poorly on their uh, sheets, the financial sheets, they got reduced to junk status. And I'm going to put these articles up here for you to take a look at yourself. And social media never existed in 1929. 
And remember, the bank, SVB in California, which is Walk at the time, they sold their bond portfolio at a loss and collapsed. And millions of, many celebrities have millions of dollars in that bank they lost. And what's even worse is, check this out. The central banks are involved in this. They're trying to avert a meltdown. Several, several central banks have announced a strategy to keep money flowing through global economy to help ward off the sort of credit crunch that gripped the markets during a financial crisis. <clears throat> Credit crunch. Does that name sound familiar? It sounds like a lesson that I did on one time. Getting your money right. Okay. And most consumers don't even do this. But it needs to be done. Everyone needs to have a notebook and paper to write down what you need what your what your needs are you follow me and get rid of your wants that's how you're going to have money to work with you follow me and The initiative led by a U.S. Federal Reserve to enable other central banks to more easily obtain U.S. dollars that can be distributed to commercial banks in their countries. And this is designed to ultimately flow through borrowers and get access to credit for mortgage business and investment. That's what's called swap line right here, okay? And when you raise the rates up, you're gonna it's gonna cost more to and um, you know what a credit crunch is, right? Global banking system tightens up, becomes much harder for consumer and business to get a loan. And uh, yeah, that's what we're at. But um, Australia's central bank is not included. It includes the country bank is robust, despite problems emerging in the U.S. and Europe. That means it hasn't even spread there yet. I'm hoping it won't spread. So anyway, so you know that First Republic Bank right here, that global bank of Christ, what just happened, Okay. You know, uh, March 10th, U.S. government's FDIC took control of SVB. It was the biggest bank collapse in America since Washington Mutual in 2008. Remember 2008? Obama was president at that time. Wheels start to come off in 48 hours earlier when a bank took multi-million dollar loss cashing out U.S. government bonds to raise money to pay depositors. It tried unsuccessfully to sell shares to shore up its finances. That triggered panic led to its downfall. March 12th, FDIC shut down Signature Bank. Okay. So, you know, Signature Bank, well, anyways, it's pretty bad. It's devastating. Shares of the credit suits collapsed as much as 30%. Swiss authorities announced. A backstop for the country's second largest biggest bank claim immediately marked market panics of global players. Now, out of the woods, investors and customers are worried that it doesn't have a credible plan to reverse a long term decline in its business. The balance sheets were weak. That was March 15th. I had to drink me some water, okay? Anyways, now let's get back to the story. March 16th, which was 
uh, last week. First Republic Bank was teetering on brink of withdrawal their deposits. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. You know, it in in uh, uh, March twenty, you know, March nineteenth. UBS by his ailing rival, Credit Suisse, an emergency rescue deal aimed at stemming financial market panic. They're going to have to assume all the losses. They're going to have to assume the negative balance sheets. They're going listen, if my company A is making record profits and my rival company is having balance sheets in the negatives, my record profits are going to disappear when I buy the rival company to have it merged with mine, of course, I'll have to take on losses. But what, what, what would that mean? The company has acquired more employees. It's gotten bigger. So i got to take on more risk. So I don't think... I, I, I think the uh, credit... Stuff in the world is correcting itself, okay? And banks are going to collapse around the world. I, my prediction between right now and October, we're, we're going to see more tightening of credit than we ever seen since 2008. All right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and let everybody know Get your money right. Get into a credit union. Get your credit cards paid off. Will it make it hard to get a loan? Yes. If you got a stress bank, they're going to look at your credit. They're going to pull your credit. What your score says about you is what your ability to pay back on a, what it talks about your uh, credit risk. The more derogatory your credit risk is, the harder it is to get a loan. They're going to say, well, we tried. You got too many inquiries. You got too many of this. You were, you were behind here. You were behind there. You see what I'm saying? Does it make it hard to get a loan? Yes. Does this make recession more likely? The answer is yes. What's going to happen when everybody holds back their money and not spend it? Um, You know, Anyways, just going to give you a heads up. Chinese Central Bank in China cut the amount of money in the country's lenders are required to hold in reserve in their bid to keep the cash flowing through the economy. They have to do this. And uh, Goldman Sachs is growing and stressing the bank set to boost it out of a U.S. recession with the next 12 months. The bank now believes the American economy has 35% chance of entering in a recession within a year up from 25% before the banking sector sector meltdown started. This was posted two days ago. So are we out of the woods? No. So now this right here, I'm going to put this here in the uh, description let everybody check it out yourselves. Because we're not, we're not, you know, we, we're, we're not out of the woods, everybody. I mean, just look at the stock ticker on, on live, real time on the internet somewhere where people trade stocks. If you see a bunch of red, I don't know what the market's telling you. But see, a lot of people are betting on thin air. When money is being printed out of thin air, it has to back my nothing. Well, they put on a note on that bill that this is legal for public and private and public debt. For legal for tender. It's backed by nothing. So, today, get your money right. You already go ahead and get your money right right now. While, you know, if you have a job, Put together a plan to get out of the debt that you're in. Have minimal debt. 
when you do that, you're going to succeed in the in the economy that is tight. Thank you for listening, and you have a good day, all right, and peace.